I'm Data, and today I'd like to showcase my cyclical variable sorter as an alternative to shulker box splitting. In front of me is one of the two wide tiles, and each tile is extremely resilient. It can handle empty boxes, unstackable items, 16 stackable items, single items, and pretty much anything else you can throw at it. So how does this actually sort items? As you might expect, there is a variable sorter here that can be mapped to any 64 stackable item. And the word cyclical refers to taking a set of mixed shulker boxes as input and pushing that set through a chain of these tiles. And at each tile along the chain, we map the leading item of the shulker boxes to the variable, variable sorter present in that tile. And once we push all the shulker boxes through the entire chain, we send the boxes back to the beginning and reset the variable sorters. And that whole process would constitute one cycle. We then repeat these cycles until all the input boxes are emptied. It's probably easiest if I just demonstrate this to you directly. So in this barrel, we have 16 different shulker boxes. Uh, we got some empty shulker boxes. We've got some shulker boxes with only non-64 stackable items. We've got some shulker boxes with only one item. And the rest of these shulker boxes, we have a variety of different items. So we have a fairly good mix. And the way we input shulker boxes into the system is just like so. So right now, what's going to be happening is that we're going to be loading shulker boxes into this large chest here. And then uh, what will happen is that a shulker box will be dispensed here. And if we look at the variable sorter, it's been mapped to light gray glazed terracotta. And uh, once this box is emptied, so that'll be right now, we're going to map the next item to the next slice. So that'd be yellow glazed terracotta. So looking at this box, that would mean the next one should be mapped to white glazed terracotta, as you can see. And the next one is going to get mapped to lime, and then the next one is going to get mapped to cyan glazed terracotta. And if we come back to the very first module, uh, if we get a, I think this was light gray, that's empty. So as you can see, we get some light gray glazed terracotta coming into this first module here. And all of those items are going to get sent down here into these loading boxes. So as the system runs, uh, I'm just going to describe to you why you might want to use a system like this. The choice of using cyclical variable sorting comes down to item type variance and item type variety. Item type variance is the number of different item types you send into your sorter. Item type variety is the number of different item types you want to sort. You can think of this as the input and output of your sorter. So here's an example. Here we have your standard hopper filters. We're sorting two items, redstone and gunpowder. And those are the only two items we're going to be inputting. So our variance is 2 and our variety is 2. Let's call this a low variance and low variety situation. And this works as you'd expect. We sort our items for the most part in parallel without any real complications. But now let's reset and increase our variance by introducing sugar, a junk item that we don't want to sort. And as you can see, we're starting to run into some problems with the sugar stacking at the end. We're processing items that don't really need to be processed. So how can we fix this? One way we can is by instead of unloading the boxes and sending those items over the filters, we can just put the boxes directly onto the filter. That way we avoid processing the sugar entirely. This would be analogous to Tuno to Names sorter for the SciCraft Mesa Quarry. Now let's say we do want to sort the sugar. This would increase the variety, and whenever we increase the variety, a variable sorter gains an edge to a fixed sorter. So let's transition to shulker box splitting. Now, although the total variance across all boxes is 3, the average variance per box is going to be 2, which comes important for how shulker box splitters work. Now, immediately, we can see that shulker box splitting is extremely fast because we are always sorting items in parallel. However, you may have also noticed that the shulker box splitting outputted four boxes, despite us only sorting three items. And this extra box is really an extra two boxes to be processed if we consider the fact we have to merge the extra box and then process the newly merged box. So this shulker box splitting operation would amount to five box processes in total. This happens because shulker box splitters sort vertically. This is normally fine for low variances, but as you can see, multiplying the average variance per box by 1.5 from 2 to 3 has resulted in the total box processes being multiplied by 1.8. Six output boxes, and three of those being doubled for being over the total variance, so that totals to nine box processes. 
So, as sequential sorting in 2No2Names sorter designed for the Cypher Mesa Quarry minimizes excess processes for low variety situations, cyclical variable sorting minimizes excess processes for high variety situations by sorting horizontally, which will be demonstrated in the following animation. Here we have a total variance of 3, an average variance per box of 3, and a variety of 3. And at the end, we only receive three boxes as the output. So, in summary, although cyclical variable sorting will slow down sorting because it operates in series as opposed to operating in parallel, we will have a constant number of box processes, and we avoid the process compounding caused by having to merge boxes. This makes cyclical variable sorting ideal for high variety, high variance situations. So, let's take a look at this pragmatically. This here is a representation of the set of 16 chakra boxes we sorted earlier. So, we have a variety of 8 different items we want to sort through. Our average variance per box is 3.4. And our total variance is going to be 8. The 8 different items that we want to sort. So, if we were to use chakra box splitters for this, we would get 55 output boxes with splitting. So that's, remember, average variance times the input. So 16. And... We also have to remember that we have to compound the amount of boxes we process with merging, so that would equate to 102 boxes to process. If we were to use cyclical variable sorting, we'd only have to process 8 boxes. And just in case you were wondering where the output goes, so this here we get the loaded boxes. Over here we will get some empty boxes. And then down here we will get empty boxes, plus unstackables, and 16 stackables. I don't intend to make a block-by-block -block tutorial for this, however, if you are interested in building this yourself or understanding how it works, I have a world download available in my Discord server. Also, within the world download, I've included color-coded brief explanations for each of the circuits. If you have any further questions, feel free to direct them to me in the same Discord server. Before I end off, I have some special thanks I'd like to give out. Thank you, The Lunatic, for sticking through with me when I first started developing this two years ago. Thank you, Rapscallion and Metamilo, for some bug identification. And thank you, Samus the Sage, for collaborating with me on making optimizations in the final stages of testing. Anyhow, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.